hormones and you fill in the blank. Doesn't that feel like the truth? It's an integrated process. And in this episode of Hormones and Skin in Midlife, I have the spa doctor in the house, literally. Among the most frequently asked questions, even I, as a fitness expert, Gad, how can I get rid of crepey skin? I've lost weight. Now I have loose skin. What can I do? I even get asked, what do you use? Like, what are your skincare products? Or when you swim, or you do all of that hiking out in the sun, do you use sunscreen? Very common. And I don't always have the answers, at least not the answers for you. So we have the right person who does today. And she is not a stranger to flipping 50, but it's been a minute. And so I'm happy to have her back. And let's face it, mm -hmm, pun intended, I couldn't help it, from exercise that you want to do for the bump in circulation. There can also be sweating and sometimes with makeup on or the sun and the wind and the chlorine, you know, and add all that to hormone fluctuation. And it's hard to put your best face forward sometimes. So let's dive in. My guest today is Dr. Trevor Cates. She's the author of the USA Today and Amazon bestselling book, Clean Skin from Within. And trust me, this is a beautiful coffee table book. She's also the founder of the spa doctor.com and that's the spa, but dr.com. She received her medical degree from the National University of Natural Medicine and was the first woman licensed as a naturopathic doctor in the state of California. She currently lives in Park City, Utah, where she helps patients from around the world with a focus on skin and hormones. She has been featured on various TV shows, including The Doctors and Extra TV. Dr. Cates has interviewed over 250 experts on the Spa Doctor podcast and hosted her own PBS special, Younger Skin from Within. Her next book, Natural Beauty Reset, the Spa Doctor's seven-day program to harmonize hormones and restore radiance is out September of 2022. And my friend, if you're listening to this, the day it is released, today is publication day. So get your hands on it. Let's dive in. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I share what to eat, how to move, and mindset shift so you can change sometimes those first two so you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve. But in addition to sharing and dealing with struggles and concerns, what we most hope to do is inspire you that aging can be different than we have ever seen in our lifetime and that we are changing it. We are raising the glass ceiling and redefining it. So let's start with this episode. The spa doctor is in the house. Dr. Cates, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Well, this is really exciting because probably after, it's in the top five, I know, after how do I get rid of this, maybe holding on to a body part close to the abdominals or to upper arms, it's I've got skin issues and maybe asking, what do you use? That Those questions circulate among our community members quite frequently. So we've got you as a captive audience. We're going to use you while you're here. <laughs> so first of all, congrats on the new book. I'm excited for you, but I'm also excited for everybody who's listening. And by the way, I did mention this in the intro, but the first book, your first one, it was just, it's a beautiful book. I mean, it's like coffee table quality books. So I have great expectations for this one as well. Yes. This one also is very beautiful and has, it's full color, has lots of recipes, additional recipes and for food as well as DIY skincare. And then a lot of really great information. Yeah. So every woman listening is like, oh my gosh, of course, right? It's, it's hormone strikes again. Uh, talk a little bit about hormone imbalances, how they impact our skin, but I'm also going to 
back up. Before we complete that question, can we answer what kind of hormone imbalances are problematic? You know, there are some some school of thought that menopause is not an imbalance or going through that's not an imbalance, it's just menopause. But I think you and I may have a an opinion about, you know, there are imbalances that show up in certain ways in your body and we don't have to settle for it and take it. So could you just address that? What kind of hormone imbalances are we talking about? And then let's talk about their impact on our skin. Absolutely. You know, it's hormones are constantly in flux. They're constantly changing. So there might be a moment when you feel like your hormones are balanced, but then something will change in your life. And then something else will, you know, other challenges will arise. So hormones are constantly in flux. And so our goal is to get them optimized, really. And and balanced is unique for every woman and every different stage of her life. So it, the, the thing is, is when you're, when you are feeling great and when you're not having symptoms and, and also, you know, you can do labs too, to, to, you know, kind of make sure those match up, but really how you feel is a really good indication of how well you're doing. And of course your skin is a way that you can look in the mirror, look at your skin and that gives you great feedback about your hormones as well. That's such a great distinction. Your hormones don't lie. So when you're looking in the mirror, and I think every woman here and for every woman she influences really need to hear that. So getting feedback that, well, everything is normal, you know, and then coming away thinking it's not my hormones because they're normal, you know, how you feel really is a better indicator and probably a reason to ask more questions about that. When, when women come to you, what, what is the biggest complaint during this midlife period all of our listeners are going through? I think, um, there, there are uh, several different ones. Um, the, probably what the two most common ones I hear across the board are having to do with weight and sleep. And I think, you know, hot flashes and night sweats are in there too, but they oftentimes you know, correspond with how people are sleeping. And I think that a lot of times going through the transition, people kind of expect hot flashes and night sweats, but they may not expect the weight changes and the sleep problems. And then of course, then the, you know, some of their energy, how they feel. And so, I mean, it really does vary from, from one woman to the next. And as much as we can do to support our bodies, it helps us through these transition times. I know I, in my book, and then also in the hormones, health and harmony docu series, I talk about the more you can get your, your hormones into an optimally balanced state. It helps us through different transitions of life. And that is puberty, get trying to get pregnant, getting pregnant, pregnancy, postpartum, and then also menopause. So these are some of the major hormonal transitions in a, in a woman's life. And some women sail right through these transitions and some women really struggle. And it's not that we have to beat ourselves up about it. If, if we do, we are one of those, you know, people that one of those, those women that um, has struggles with this, but that knowing that we don't have to suffer through that there are options, some of it's genetics, and that can certainly play a role. Like how our mothers or sisters, other women in our family, go through menopause often gives us a good indication of what it's going to be like for us. But a lot of it has to do with our lifestyle. And even if we're, we have genetics that show like, you know, our parents or our mothers had a hard time going through menopause, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have that because there's so much we can do with our lifestyle choices that can help us ease through those transitional times. Amen. So back to directly to skin complaints that you hear. I mean, what is it? Is it fine lines and wrinkles? Is it acne? Is it the two of them happening at once? What's a woman's worst or biggest complaint, the most common thing that you hear about skin? 
those are probably the two most common ones that I yeah. hear about. Yeah. And it's it's funny because you think that it would just be around this time in life and the perimenopausal, menopausal years that you hear this. But I hear women in their 20s and 30s also saying to me, what can I do for acne and my, you know, an aging skin? It's, it's like, it's, it's never, it never stops. Ends. <laughs> so oh there's, gosh. those are two of the biggest questions I get, but certainly our hormones play a big role of that. And so when we go through these transitional times, like menopause, it can, they can, we can have these flare ups of flare up of acne. And then also we may notice, wow, my skin is all of a sudden aging faster than I usually see it. And so those are just can be signs. Okay. What can we do to help restore our balance in our body so that it's, it's not so significant because the, again, our skin just, it's amazing how our skin can give us these messages. So don't beat yourself up about it, but just your skin's giving you feedback about what's going on with your health, including your hormones. Great comment. Okay. So let's say adults, adult acne or midlife acne, is it, uh, is it a sign or a symptom or is it the result of something going on? It's just telling you, oh yeah, your hormones, I guess, is it the problem or is it, no, it's just hinting that there is a different problem. Oh, right. So while, well, you know, hormones can be, it can be a sign of hormonal imbalances, but there's usually something else going on because it, acne doesn't exist everywhere in the world. There are places in, around the world where acne is not a thing, even during menopause or perimenopause or puberty, that it's just not, not really known to be a real issue, but certainly I within wanna our- I want to go there. Where is that? I want to go there. <laughs> so, so there's, um, I'm trying to remember, I, like Papua New Guinea, there's a place there that there they've never had a, a diagnosed case of- of acne. And then, you know, I don't know how much you've traveled, but traveling around the world, I remember a few years ago when I went to Uganda and I looked around at all these beautiful people and I could never saw a case of acne. I never saw one person with acne. Uh, we were, we were doing that. We were there on a, with a, on a, uh, on a project working with a bunch of girls, teenage girls, girls that would normally be really struggling with their skin. I didn't see a single one with acne. And so I think we we oftentimes just assume that it's part of our lives. And just that some just because something is common doesn't mean that it's normal or that it's optimal. So it's certainly not something that we have to put up with. And a lot of it goes back to our lifestyle. So we do know that things like blood sugar imbalances, when we have, um, we eat too much sugar or foods that turn to sugar, that can trigger acne breakout. So looking at our blood sugar balance also um, changes with our androgen levels, surges in that, changes in imbalances with that can also create trigger acne breakouts. But really a lot of it goes back to our gut health. When our gut health is in a good place, when we're eating plenty of fiber and our gut microbiome is in a healthy place, it really shows up on our skin. And, you know, this is something that we've, as naturopathic doctors, we've talked about it for many, many years about that, the gut connection with the skin. And for, um, you know, now for the last decade, there's been more and more research coming out about the skin microbiome and how it's connected to the gut microbiome. And this gut brain skin access and the research between with all of this is so fascinating. So I'm sure you talk with your people about, about the gut microbiome and all of these fabulous microorganisms that live in our gut and, and in a balanced place creates healthy digestion, also impacts, impacts our brain health and also impacts our hormones and our skin. And our skin has its own balance of microorganisms that live on and protect our skin and keep it from breaking out in acne and from aging prematurely and having other skin issues like eczema or rosacea, psoriasis. So our skin microbiome is so important. And a lot of that goes back to our gut. Of course, what we put on our skin also plays a role as well, but so much of it goes back to the gut. Yeah. I really love that you brought that up because I honestly, I think that a lot of women will go through something like a 28 day 
elimination diet, then reintroducing. And one of the comments will be, you know, my skin like looks so good, right? When some of those foods go out that probably were not doing what they needed to have done with their gut biome, just giving a, a negative impression and reaction, let alone the bloating and and gas and other distresses that happen from that. So I love that connection. And I think we can't probably emphasize enough that like the hormones and the gut and that connection is so big that there's no, there's no way that your skin and your energy and everything else won't be affected when the gut is. So very important to look at. So from your standpoint, from the inside more than from the outside, topically, is that a better solution then, a better answer? Is that what you're saying? Well, I really believe that about 80% of it's from the inside out, but it's not 100%. And that's because of years of seeing patients that I would get them to a certain place from an inside out perspective. But until I started adding in the topical perspective, that, that component to it, many of them didn't get 100%. Some people can get fully better from just the inside out approach, but there's a lot too that we can do topically on the skin. So that part's important. So again, you want to address gut microbiome imbalances. You want to address hormonal imbalances, inflammation, oxidative damage, blood sugar is a huge one, especially for acne and aging. Cause as I mentioned with blood sugar imbalances, when you get that increase in blood sugar, that can trigger excess sebum production and androgen activity, and that can trigger acne breakouts. And then also when you get a lot of sugar foods that turn to sugar, it creates glycation issues in the body, which means that glucose will bind to collagen in the skin, making it more rigid and less elastic. So we keep finding more and more about blood sugar balance and how important that is. And insulin resistance is on the rise and insulin yeah. is a hormone. So it all ties in together. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up too. So let's go into some of the topical things and and the problematic things right now. And it's like going to the store or does anybody do that anymore? Looking online, there's so many choices when it comes to skincare and, and talk a little bit about toxins. And I want to let listeners know the spa doctor here has a line and it's wonderful. And so years ago when we were in the same group, I was traveling and I was going from dry climate to humid climate back again within a week, all for just a really busy time of life, which I'm sure that didn't help either, but I was breaking out. And so here comes the spa doctor with a little goodie bag for me. And within a couple of days, my skin just calmed down and I was just you know, kind of the soothing restoration that I needed. But talk about what do we need to be aware of in terms of toxins in skincare? And and I want you to say something about putting oil on your skin, because I think that to a lot of women still even listening, that's still a really new concept. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, let me bust a couple of myths here. Um, so about skincare, one is I think it's important to realize that just because it says natural or hypo hypoallergenic on the label doesn't necessarily mean anything. They're actually typically just used as marketing claims because the FDA does not have any regulations around those two words, natural and hypoallergenic. So I think it's really misleading a lot because the good news is that more companies are creating natural skincare products. The bad news is that a lot of the so-called natural aren't truly clean and non-toxic. So we do have to still do our homework and look at labels and understand a little bit about ingredients because unfortunately, a lot of big skincare companies are riding that natural wave and mm -hmm. using that as a claim. And I think it's really interesting when I go to my manufacturer and I start asking them questions, okay, well, with this batch, did you do this test? And did you do that test? And what was the pH of this? And what was, you know, and they say, you know, 
know, nobody else asks us these questions when we make wow. skincare products for them. And they, I mean, they appreciate it, but um, they're just say, you know, most of the time skincare products, they just, they, well, you know, the expiration dates or, or, you know, or the pH or the, actually the ingredients don't necessarily have to match what's on the label. There's a lot of, of Ooh. shady stuff that happens in the skincare industry that is, is pretty shocking. And, uh, I had no idea before I got into this world, what, uh, what I was getting myself <laughs> into. <laughs> But um, the good news is that I can provide truly natural and effective skincare products for the, my customers and my patients and myself and my family. My 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 daughters appreciate it too. <laughs> Are there certain things, certain ingredients that we want to watch out for or that we want to look for and say, okay, this is a good one. Keep going. Yes, absolutely. And unfortunately, there are more than I can spend uh, <laughs> time today talking about, but I'll, uh. give you, I'll give you a few of them. Uh, so fragrance is one of the most common ingredients in skincare products. And we see fragrance, of course, in a lot of personal care products, cleaning products, a lot of things in our homes. And the problem is that there can be endocrine disrupting chemicals, or there typically are endocrine disrupting chemicals in fragrance. So for example, diethyl phthalate is an ingredient in fragrance that's used to make it last longer, but it is a known endocrine disrupting chemical and it has been detected in human urine samples, which means that it does get absorbed through the skin, ends up in the body. And I mean, the good news is we're urinating it out, but the problem is, is that if we're constantly getting exposed to it, we're not giving our bodies a break from it. So our bodies are constantly trying to do its job to, to move itself, to remove move it out of our bodies. And endocrine disrupting chemicals are this group of chemicals that are known to interfere with our hormone function. So here we are, people often have said to me, well, how did you go from talking about skin all the time to talking about hormones? And so that's when I realized, you, you know, really need to make this connection because one of the biggest reasons we are having a lot, we're seeing a lot more hormone related issues, health issues like thyroid disease and breast cancer and infertility and period problems and, you know, more abnormal, uh, perimenopausal kinds of symptoms is that we are exposed to more of these endocrine disrupting chemicals now than we ever have been. More of these are in production than ever before. And then all the ones from the past are still existing in our environment. Things like lead, for example, it still consists in, in, in our cycle, it will still continue to exist in the soil even long after it's been banned or not used anymore. And so we um, unfortunately keep getting exposed to these. So it really is up to us to reduce our exposure to the products that we can, that we have control over. So our personal care products are one of the places that we can do that. So choosing fragrance-free or using organic essential oils, products with the organic essential oils like we'd use at the spa doctor or going fragrance-free is another option. And um, so that's an example. And then also another big one that a lot of people are using are Chemical sunscreen ingredients like oxybenzone is another um, hormone disrupting chemical. And then also things like parabens. Those have been, a lot of those have been removed from skincare products, but sometimes you still see those. But what you would mention to me about oils. Yeah. So I definitely want to touch on that because I think for so long, I know growing up, all the skincare products that we used, I feel like they all had mineral oil and or some version of petroleum products, whether it's, you know, chapstick or lip gloss or face products, whatever, they always had that. But the good news is that now we have all these really great natural plant-based oils that we can find in natural skincare products. Since that's what we use in the Spa Doctor products. So mineral oil is is it comes from petroleum. Petroleum is also 
where gasoline comes from. So why would we want to get our face oil from the same place that we get gasoline from? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And so where on the other hand, where you have plant-based oils like sea buckthorn fruit oil, argan oil, raspberry seed oil, uh, coconut oil, jojoba oil, there's so many different really fabulous oils that we can get from plants. And so not only do are we not concerned about the toxicity or the possible contaminants, but like we would be from petroleum products, but we're also getting these essential, you know, fatty acids, these omega, omega rich oils that are beneficial for our skin topically, and also antioxidants. A lot of these have high antioxidants, like sea buckthorn fruit oil has tremendous amounts of vitamin C. So we can get these things from directly from nature and they nourish our skin. They don't just make our skin look dewy and glowy when we put it on and then after we wash it off, it goes away, but it's actually giving us that dewy, glowy look while at the same time nourishing our skin. So good. And there are a lot of women still, I think though, who resist you know, putting on essential oil based products, thinking, you know, an oil, I already have oily skin. I'm already dealing with breakouts. Can you maybe bust that myth a little bit? Yeah. It's kind of like the low fat craze that we went through in the eighties mm-hmm. where everybody was like, Oh, fats are bad. So don't eat any fats. Um, so which is the, which we now know is not true. You've just got to choose the right fats, the healthy fats, the fats that are good for your body. So it's like that with oils. You don't want to just use any oil. It's true. Some oils aren't going to be that great for your skin. If you have oily skin, especially things like mineral oil, But if you have oily skin, your skin still is going to benefit from the oils. And by the way, if you do have that oilier skin, one of the advantages is you may be more prone to to acne, unfortunately, but you also are going to be probably less likely to have as many of the, you know, fine lines and wrinkles and, and your skin might hold up a little bit better than someone with really dry skin. But either way, Using oils for your skin can really help with uh, balancing the oils in your skin. And it's not going to, like, having more oil doesn't mean oil your skin. You just have to use the right oils and, and use them in the right way. And one of the biggest mistakes people use is actually with their cleanser. So they're using a cleanser that's stripping their skin of um, the natural oils. So we have these great, just like we have these great microorganisms in our skin that needs to be in balance, part of that comes from the natural oils in our skin. So when we strip our skin of that, we're messing up the skin microbiome, we're messing up the pH of our skin. And then our body is like, our skin is trying to get its pH back get its natural oils back. And that can create a lot of issues. It's not actually the oils that are the problem. It's usually more of the high pH and the harsh cleansing agents. Interesting. That's so what do we need to use? What do we want as a as a more gentle cleanser? Yeah, so that's and that's exactly what we created the spa doctor. It's because I kept realizing that my uh, patients had these foamy cleansers, or some were just using bar of soaps, or some weren't even washing their you know face. They would just like use water and just wipe their face off. And I'm like, well, there's got to be a nice balance here. So when I started looking at it, I realized there's a certain pH that is really important for the skin, and it's about 4.6 to 5 pH. And that is um, oftentimes hard to find in a cleanser because as soon as something is sudsy, it suds, it foams up like a bar of soap or a foamy kind of cleanser, typically has very high pH ingredients in there. So you, you can actually test the pH of your cleanser by using a pH strip. Now, if you're using an oil, a hundred, you know, completely oil-based cleanser, then it's harder to test the pH of it. But a lot of these um, skincare products, you could just use a pH strip and check, and it should, shouldn't be over 5.5. Most cleansers and um, moisturizers, they're going to have a high pH of over 5.5. 
And what the research shows is that's just not healthy for our skin. So that our skin has to work harder to get to restore that pH back. And so what a lot of people will then do is they'll use a toner to try and drop that acidity of the skin after using a high pH cleanser, or they're using a toner to get off whatever their cleanser didn't remove. Well, that means your cleanser is just not working if you're having to do that. So the spot doctor we use is an oil-based cleanser, but it's not just oil that's in there. We want to have some surfactants in there too that help pull, you know, makeup and debris and different things off the skin. And then I also recommend using, we have a, a natural konjac sponge that we recommend people use with the cleanser. So that actually has some gentle exfoliation along with it. So it removes any, any debris, makeup, perspiration, excess oil maybe that you do have on your skin. So that's, that's a great way to do it. That is great. Great information. Okay. So everybody, you know, you've got those test strips. You're using them to find out if you're in keto. So now you have a different kind of use. I want you to experiment. So I would love to hear what you find. And that is so interesting. So if you are listening and you do this, we want to know what you find and what the product you're using is. That will save a lot of women a lot of headaches and potentially a lot of money. Oh, uh, okay. So I alluded earlier that, you know, you you saved me with that little goodie bag. And, you know, that was kind of an illustration of flying within a short period of time, but it was like changing seasons because basically what I was doing is changing climate. How does like a change of season affect skin and the skin care needs that we have? Yeah, great question. Well, it's it's really a big part of what led me to write my second book, Natural Beauty Reset, was that I was realizing that people would go through periods of time. My patients would go through periods of time where they would they'd be doing better. And then, and then, it, you know, things would change and they wouldn't really be as seeing much as much benefit. And then I started to realize that, that the, that we go through seasons and um, our, our needs change with the season. So, and the, and I'm talking about, you know, fall, winter, spring, summer. And of course, our bodies also go through changes as seasons as women, you know, and different mm -hmm. transitions as well. But I'm talking about how the sun changes. So when the length of the day gets longer in the summer versus shorter in the winter time, it actually impacts the food that grows around us. So certain certain foods will become in season as a result of that. And also it changes our sleep patterns and it changes our hormones. So when these seasonal changes happen, part of it's due to the temperature change, part of it's due to the sun changes, um, just to the distance of the sun. And, um, and then, you know, things that are going on around us, it changes our needs for food movement, mindset, and skincare. So that's what I realized with my patients. And then I decided to write this book so that I could share this with more people of changing with each season. And so what I do in the book is I provide a seven day reset for each season. So there's recommendations for food, um, seven different meal ideas, meal plan ideas for that particular season. And then seven different ideas for skincare tips and seven different mindset practices, seven different movement, because we go through these changes. And so for example, in the summertime, of course, we're getting more sun exposure. So we need to be more mindful of being protective of our, our, sun, our skin from sun damage. And, and then it, when we, as we go into fall, then we might notice, wow, I've got more hyperpigmentation, uneven skin tone, or you might notice, oh, it's time. I really need to do some exfoliation because of the changes going into winter. And so there are different things that we want to think about with our skincare at different times. And then with food, again, we want to eating seasonally is going to provide more opportunities for nutrients in your food. Also foods taste better when they're in season. And then your motivation might change as well. I mean, doing a lot of fitness, I'm sure you've seen this over the years is come winter, people aren't maybe quite as motivated to go outside and exercise or even to go to the gym. And our hormones are related to this. We typically see 
higher cortisol levels in the winter compared to summer, which means we're typically a bit more stressed and we're um, maybe it's not as easy for us to, to think about things like mindset and, and movement, but those are really important times. And then we also in the winter time tend to see lower levels of our feel good neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine uh, compared to warmer months. So we also need to do things to help support that. So I start off the book with the fall season because it's the perfect time to get prepared in time for winter. So it's the time when you prepare your body for your immune system, your mood, your sleep, all of these things to kind of get it on track and ready for when we may not feel so motivated. (laughs) So good. Oh, I love that. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I had no idea that's how you laid it out. So it's really kind of an eternal evergreen book. You're not just going to pick it up and put it down. It's going to be a great resource throughout the year. Yes, absolutely. So good. Okay. So you, in conjunction with this, you've got a nine-part docu-series. Tell me a little bit about what inspired you to do that as well. Yeah. So when I was right, when I went to go write this book, a big part of what I wanted to address in this book was talking about hormones and hormonal imbalances, because it was one of the biggest questions I got after my last book was, you know, I know you mentioned hormones as Dr. Case. I know you mentioned hormones as one of the root causes or so how do I, how do I balance my hormones? And so I wanted to spend a lot of time talking about hormones because for women, they are kind of complex and, but they can really work for us rather than against us when we get them into the right place. So that's what really inspired me to write the book. But then as I was writing it, I realized, wow, there is so much here. And I know that people don't need to just hear from me. So I got together um, over 50 experts and interviewed them in person, which was kind of tricky, <laughs> but we interviewed them <laughs> in person, put together this, this nine-part documentary series, Hormones, Health, and Harmony. And it's all about how our hormones impact our health, different stages, different ages, and how we can really get our hormones in a balanced state. And these different experts, many of them struggled with their hormones themselves. Many of them are gynecologists or other hormone experts, and they had their own personal journeys that they share what they did, what what problems they had and what they did, how it changed their practices and how they've gone in to help other people. So it's really nice to not just have it from my perspective, but you hear all these different um, different experts talking about this and even gynecologists who used to practice more conventionally and how, where that, there was that moment where they thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't continue to practice my, with my patients this way. And I can't personally continue to live this way and how they, turned their lives around and then went on to change their practices. So really wanted to get this documentary out there, documentary series to help inspire women and really help them feel empowered, especially at a time when we, you know, we, we can sometimes feel like our health is in control of us or our doctors aren't really maybe telling us everything or don't have the time to tell us everything we want to know. So it's really to help inform women to be the best C- CEOs of their own health and they're probably their families as well. So awesome. All right. I can't wait to dive into that. How do listeners get access to the docuseries? Yeah, they can go to hormoneseries.com and just register for that. You got to put your um, name and email in and we'll send you the link to watch it when it goes live. Well, each episode as it goes live, we'll email you the link to watch it. Beautiful. Dr. Kate, thanks so much for being here. This is going to be one of those evergreen podcasts people come to because we don't do a lot on skincare, although it's a huge question. And I mean, every woman has a face. So (laughs) thank you again. And thanks in advance for the book. And everybody, you want to get your hands on that. And again, it's one of those coffee table books. It's not just a great read and resource for you. But these are the kind of books, I don't know about you, but I buy them as gifts 
for younger women, older women, for all the women in my life. This is a keeper. So thank you so much. And now, listeners, it's your turn. So if there's a question that you think I should have asked the spa doctor while she was here that I missed, you can leave your comments below the show notes. That'll be at flipping50.com forward slash hormones and skin. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.